Are you trying to decide between a motocross race bike and a trail bike? Well, there's a big difference between these two, so you definitely don't want to buy the wrong one, especially if this is your first dirt bike. I've been riding dirt bikes for over 20 years and riding all the different kinds of bikes, so I want to share with you the main advantages as well as disadvantages to each bike and which one is best for you and your specific needs. Let's start with the engine. So a motocross uh, race bike has a very powerful and high horsepower engine, which is great for racing or play riding. Uh, if you like a lot of horsepower, riding up hills or going in straight lines or drag racing. But this power is very snappy and it's not as predictable as a trail bike because at low RPM, it does not have much torque which means it's not very smooth at low RPM. So if you're just trying to get going in first gear, you got to give it a lot of clutch and throttle. You got to slip the clutch a lot to get it going. Uh, especially when you're just starting out and you don't have good uh, clutch control. Because a race bike, a motocross bike, has very little flywheel weight, which means it revs up really quickly. Then it revs back down very quickly. And this makes it very easy to stall uh, when you're just trying to get going in first gear or if you're riding at low speeds like a tight corner, whether you're in the woods or just making a tight turn. If you're riding at a low RPM, uh, 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 it's really easy for the bike to stall uh, if you don't pull in the clutch. And then the power slowly builds up in the mid-range, depending on which motocross bike you get, but it really starts to build up. And then once you get above like 8,000 RPM, these things, they really take off. <laughs> Whether it's a two-stroke or a four-stroke. And this power can be quite intimidating if you've never ridden a, a dirt bike uh, or a motorcycle off-road in the dirt before. And especially if you're riding in the woods or single track trails for the first time because this power feels very jerky and the bike wants to jump out from underneath you or you can easily get that infamous whiskey throttle which is where you give it gas and you slide back on the seat and you're right hand gives twists the throttle even more and brrr, uh, you fly right into a tree or you fly off the trail or the bike just loops out from underneath you this can be really scary and it's one of the big reasons why i never recommend a motocross or a race bike to a beginner so if this is your first dirt bike this is one disadvantage to starting out on one and this snappy power on the motocross bike is not only harder to control, but it's more exhausting because when you give it gas and and you're constantly pushing and pulling on the bars because you're still trying to get used to uh, learning what the proper body position is, which I teach you in my virtual dirt biker school. But if you aren't anticipating what the bike is doing, you're going to constantly be pushing and pulling, like doing pull-ups on the handlebars, and that can get very exhausting very quickly on your hands, your wrists, your arms. They start to pump up, and you can barely use the throttle, the brake, and the clutch, forcing you to slow down or stop if you want to be able to hang on to the bike without crashing. But if you're an experienced a racer or a trail rider and you like that snappy aggressive power more power to you I mean if you can handle it why not have more power whereas the trail bike it has a very smooth power curve so the mo the race bike motocross bike the power is like this where the trail bike is like this when looking at like a dyno chart so it has good low-end torque which makes it really easy to learn how to use the clutch because you don't need to give it too much throttle uh, when you're just getting going. Just and the torque right off of idle kind of just pulls the bike so you don't have to worry about stalling as often, especially since the flywheel weight is heavier. And a heavier flywheel weight, it doesn't change the power, how much power it has. It just adds more rotational mass to the engine. And when there's more rotational mass, uh, it's harder for the engine to spin up, so it spins the engine slower, which makes it more controllable because it'll be less jerky 
and you will get more traction because the tire doesn't want to break loose as easily. So it spins up slower and then it spins back down slower, which means that if you let off the throttle and you like come into a corner, it's not going to stall out or flame out as easily as a motocross bike, especially if you forget to grab the clutch if the RPM gets too low. And why is this important? Well, when you're learning to ride in the woods or on the trails and you're constantly stalling the bike, it gets really frustrating because you're having to start and stop and stop and start. And especially if you have a kickstart bike, your leg, your right leg is going to get uh, worn out really quickly. But then the disadvantage of having less power is, I guess, when you're racing or if you need a lot of power to do drag racing or hill climbs, that's going to take a little more effort to wind the engine out on a trail bike to get up that hill or race your buddy. And moving on to the suspension where the motocross bike, it has more travel, which means it has more potential for performance, but sometimes you don't need that much for performance, especially if you're just starting out or riding trails at 5, 10, 15 miles an hour. The motocross suspension is a lot stiffer and harsher because you need to be able to do big jumps or whoops and these big impacts are really hard on the suspension so you need the stiffer suspension to hold you up because if the forks and shock are too soft they're just going to completely compress and then when they fully compress they'll just bounce back up and this can really throw you off the bike or out of control you'll lose traction it's almost dangerous if you have way too soft of suspension when you're racing but for beginners if you're just starting out or riding trails at lower speeds this stiff suspension will get very exhausting very quickly because it's so harsh you feel every little bump every little rock in your hands and your legs and your back because it's so stiff it's meant to be raced or ridden fast on and if you're not riding fast enough the suspension isn't going to compress and absorb those bumps and impacts. Whereas the trail bike, the suspension is a lot softer. It's going to soak up those bumps at five, 10 miles an hour a lot better so that you won't feel it as much in your arms and hands, which will make it more comfortable and you'll be able to ride longer without cramping up or getting fatigued. Now, as far as maintenance and reliability goes, both bikes can be pretty reliable. It mainly depends on how you maintain it. And for the race bike, they're generally gonna require more maintenance as far as changing oil, cleaning the air filter, because the extra power is gonna break down the oil faster, it's gonna suck in more air and more dirt, and the air boxes are more opened up to suck in more air. So you're just gonna be spending a little bit more time, a little bit more money uh, in the long run on a motocross or enduro race bike. And once you get over like 100 or 200 hours, you're gonna have to start checking the valves, especially if it starts running rough or it's getting hard to start because the valves are going to wear out quicker than a old school uh, air cooled trail bike. And the trail bike is going to last generally a lot longer, especially if you're just starting out or a casual trail rider that doesn't ride at high RPM all the time. So you can probably get 10, 20 hours on an oil change and air filter. It really depends on where you ride because if you're riding in sandy conditions, you're going to be changing air filter more frequently no matter what bike you're riding. But basically, you just change it when it gets dirty. And as far as engine rebuilds, a race bike can last anywhere from 10 hours to a couple hundred hours. It depends on how you ride and where you ride. Where a trail bike, if you're only getting 100 hours on a trail bike uh, before needing to rebuild, you're probably doing something wrong or you're probably racing it. You should be getting hundreds of hours. You should be getting years out of a trail bike before you even need to think about rebuilding it. Then the overall value that you get uh, buying a race bike, it's going to lose its value a lot quicker than a trail bike because they're not as desirable to general public uh, beginners. There's more beginners than hardcore racers so a trail bike is going to hold its value longer which means that if you buy a five-year-old trail bike for three thousand dollars you may be able to ride it for three four years and then sell it for close to the same price whereas if you did that with a motocross bike 
you probably be losing a thousand fifteen hundred dollars on it or more just because the value goes down so much quicker on a race bike and if you are a beginner or novice trail rider that's struggling with confidence uh, you should check out this video on how to build your confidence on the trails five times faster so check it out and let me know what you think